Ladies and gentlemen, here to give the most famous words in motorsports, please welcome today's Grand Marshal, Dallas Mavericks, and NBA MVP, Dirk Nowitzki. Challenge! Start your engine! Come on, gang. Hang him up. Thank you, dude. All right, fired up. Fired up. All right, boys, let's double check our quiver. We've got a good car here. Ready to go do this. Let's not beat ourselves today. It's going to be a long race. Pay attention. Heads up on pit road. Let's not beat ourselves. Have a good day, buddy. Long way to go here. You know how to win this race. Guys, be solid to pit. Two, four, thank you. dropped a spot back to third. And you see some of the cars moving to the top of the racetrack already. The track is a little bit dirty up there. Nobody's run on it yet. These are the first few laps. The drivers need to be careful right now. Get that top dusted off. See Jeff Gordon struggling still here on the top side of turn two. He struggled in practice yesterday and it looks like the car is not quite where he wants it, at least in these early laps. He was 31st practice, 31st quickest in practice yesterday. He's concerned about this car a little bit. He's talked to his teammates. They put an alternate setup in it. They feel like they're ready, but it's yet to be seen. Rusty said you could hear the concern in Gordon's voice during that final happy hour session. He said the car was loose, 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 and suddenly tight in the corner. Very concerned. 24, dropping back. Let's check in his pitch with Alan Bestman. When I talked with his crew chief, Steve Letard, in the garage this morning, Doc, he wasn't that concerned. He said he and Jeff had to make an appearance together last night. They spent 15 minutes in the back of a car and getting there, and in that time, decided on the changes they'd make to that car to go from the end of practice yesterday to the start of the race today. They were only a few. They felt like the conditions would come to them as the race went on. We'll see if that turns out to be the case. Jeff Gordon did not pit. His last pit stop was on lap 17. Folks, let's listen to the radios. Gosh, they're saving us because we're pretty decent for a couple laps. It just gets way too tight, right? All on throttle. Yeah, you know, down there, three and four. It's before I pick up the throttle. Down there, one and two. Seems like it turns pretty good for me um, until I pick up the throttle. And that was the, the discussion under the caution flag just a moment ago between Jeff Gordon and his crew chief, Steve Letart. Now, Jeff Gordon got track position. He's leading. He's in clean air. Jimmy Johnson, meanwhile, got four tires. He's way back in 27th position. And a lot more in the danger zone right now if something should happen on the racetrack. Now, Steve Letart tells me it's going to be track position all day for their strategy. Kurt Busch, the two-car, coming in again, Jamie. Well, they had some bad luck, Doc. They uh, came in for their pit stop, went out, and they had a left flat. So they came in, they changed that. Now they're taking the spring rubber out. He needs more changes. He says, what the heck, we have nothing to lose. So they're going to take that uh, spring rubber out of the right rear and change that tire. So uh, Kurt Busch trying to hang in there, Susie, and change up his car for the changing conditions. That's typically the way the track goes when it gets cooler. The back end starts to get a little bit more grip. Seems like the front end may lose a little grip when that happens, but uh, when you have a loose car, you want to see that track cool down. Maybe not hard to figure this one. Four tires versus no tires, and the five car goes right on by. Yeah, no contest here. I mean, like I've always said, there's no tire like a new tire. Junior's doing okay. If he, we've got a caution here. Well, 41 of Sorensen in the wall. 38 of Gilliland spins. And oh. Carl Edwards, you see his car yeah, slowing. Thanks. Man, that's two. Uh, Chip Ganassi and Felix Zavada's teams out of the race right now with big damage. Reed Sorensen driving the number 41 there. A lot of damage. Looks like they're not going to be able to get that car back in for a long time. David Gilliland and the Yates car, the 38 car. There's the heavy damage on the 41. Yeah, we're Have done, boys. He stove the... in the fence there on the back stretch. The good news is the window that is down, which means he's awake and alert. That's the sign of the safety crews. This is the same car, by the way, that he had a career best finish last week in Atlanta. 
when he came home in third position in front of the home state folks there. He is from Peachtree City, Georgia. Here's what happened a moment ago to the 41 and 38. They got together here, the 41 and the 38. It almost looks like the 38 car, David Gilliland, got loose, and Reed might have reacted to that, jumped out of the throttle, and the car got loose with him also. And he went around, I believe it was a chain reaction, Andy, because of what happened with the 38 at David Gillian. Carl Edwards trying to snake his way through these cars. This is the view from on board his Ford. Inside the 78. You see it, slow down, slow down, just stop, stop if you got to. You see him, you see him go high now, go high, come on, baby. That's Bobby Hudson, the spotter for Carl Edwards, doing a great job right there, moving Carl through that wreck. Oh my gosh, Kurt Busch's problems continue just when he works his way back up in the top five. Susie, he had a bad, bad vibration on the right front. They thought it was a tire issue. They didn't want to chance it since they've already had one flat. They brought it in, four tires of fuel. Bush just cannot buy a break here, ha having to go uh, back in the pits and come back out now in the two car, uh, now being shown a lap down in 23rd position. And Matt Kenseth will take the lead. This is typical Matt Kenseth style. He rides around most of the race, looks at his watch, and finally says, okay, it's time to go. He's good as he's rich. Oh, spin off of turn four. Rumble the 20 car, 38 of oh, all behind gets you. Oh, behind you. Off turn two, a spin was. See the 25 car of Casey Mears involved. A little miss uh, right there. I don't know if it was all the turbulent air going on there or what. Jeff Gordon able to get through that. Jimmy Johnson was not around that mess. And that could have been disastrous when it comes to uh, the point standings. There's a 38 of Gilliland. Six car, David Reagan. This melee happened off a of turn two. Everybody stacking up, getting sideways. Take a look at this. Looks like the 25 car, Casey Mears, bumped in the back of the 88 of Ricky Rudd, shot up the track, got loose and spun. And they all started taking evasive action. Dale Jarrett. Wow, look at the Ooh, hard impact. He's in it. 29 car, Harvick able to get in the back of the 38 and get by. There's Mears involved. Reagan, heavy hard, heavy hit for... David Reagan, the rookie contender. 66 involved as well. Mayfield. Looks like Casey Mears just came up behind the 88 car and he's trying to look for a hole or a way to go and maybe just got a little bit loose. Wow. There's the contact. Mears and Stewart right in front of 38. Got nowhere to go. Harvick into the back of the 38. Wow, how did Kevin Harvick, he was right behind the 38, splits Stewart and Gilliland. Guys, that was incredible with the 29 car. Kevin Harvick just said he was in solid smoke. Let's take a look at this again. Got one spin in front of you. Go high. Go high. Well, we already gave him the Come good on, hands. Come on, Spade. Come on, Give it to him again. All right, good job. We got some thunder, I think. Boy, Andy, you talk about a big change in the temperatures out there in the racetrack. I mean, things have changed big time since this race has started. Take a look at it. Yeah, 24 degrees of track temperature can make a big, big difference in the way the car is. Not a lot of the outside air temperature, only 4 degrees, but look at the track temperature. Started at 95 all the way down to 71. That is a huge feel for a driver on the racetrack. The car handles definitely different. That sun's not beating on it right now. That black asphalt's not getting hot. And that's where all the heat in the racetrack comes, is that radiant heat from the sunshine. So once that thing gets shaded, which now the whole track is shaded, that won't change anymore the rest of the race. We get a little cooler air temp, but that shade has is, is already stabilized the track now. 07, Clint Boyer on pit road. This cannot be scheduled, I wouldn't think. Dave? He's worried about the right rear tire, Doc. He thinks it has a loose wheel. Uh, a spotter, Mike Dillon, told him this is your call. You need to make the call. Much as Greg Biffle did yesterday during the Bush Series race. Now, Biffle didn't end up having a problem, but when your guys are going around here to over 190 miles an hour, you give the driver that option to bring his car in. And he just went a lap down, but he could not ignore it. Remember what happened to Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the late laps of Atlanta last week? He had a vibration, and he ignored it. What happened? The tire came off. But he said, I blame myself for ignoring that. 
Clint Boyer says, I'm in a championship hunt. I cannot ignore it. For more information, by the way, on anti-sway bars, you can log on to ESPN.com. Search word Tech Center. Oh, man, we talked, Brad Doherty talked at the beginning of the show, and so we can't have any mistakes. This needed to be the no-mistake 500, and now we've got a loose wheel or something went disarray in the 07 car, Clint Boyer, one of our chase contenders. Back at Texas Motor Speedway, folks, things have just changed in a hurry here. Caution for the 11th time, and it was the battle up front that we were watching every single lap. Kenseth and Hamlin on the bottom of the racetrack and top of the racetrack coming off. Now watch the dicing here between the 17 and 11. And they were passing back and forth, Andy. Big crossover move right here with Denny Hamlin underneath the 17. And this kind of swapped spots on these guys. And then they were just duking it out lap after lap. And now Denny Hamlin's on the bottom of the track. Kenseth gets it outside. Boom. He gets him in a left rear quarter panel. Knocks him sideways. He takes himself out. Big damage on the right side of Denny Hamlin. And he looks like he's going to be out of the race. Still there. Just tight, tight race. Back up front, Kyle Busch is our leader and more on fuel today. He is laying down the lap stock, but maybe at just a slightly slower pace. He was asked to save fuel by his crew chief, Alan Gustafson. He, of course, asked, can we make it to the end? And Gustafson said 334, but this is going to change everything. Biffle crashing. Greg Biffle uh, brings out caution. What you got, bud? I'm front end damage. <laughs> it just all changed right here. We're on this on fire. Well, they got a big fire underneath the 16 car, Greg Biffle, right now. Let's see how big that thing gets. He might have to get out of that car before he gets it back to pit road. Okay, guys, we got 36 laps to go, and Jeff Gordon sitting back there in ninth spot. If he wants to get a good a good finish, he might need to try to roll the dice right here, maybe take two tires. What would you do? Would you I think I would take two in this in this spot and just see what he can do. Here's a 16 car, Biffle, bringing out caution uh, for the 12. Fire truck shaky. Just get out. Get out. And you see that just the, the inside is full of smoke, and he's got to get out in a hurry. He's got an oil cooler ruptured or an oil line, and if he keeps driving, I think he's pumping it out on the header. Yeah, but he's breathing that stuff right now, guys. He's got to get out of there to get some fresh air to, to himself, or else he's going to, you know, can hurt him bad. Yeah, smoke inhalation. They're trying the to help him get, out, out. get unhooked. And they're saying get the side window out, knock it out so some of this air. This is the window on the right-hand side that he's trying to get out, and that would really help let ventilate some of this air out of this car. Breaks out. Good news. Show you the contact here that brought out the caution for Greg Biffle here on lap 298. Same deal as before here. Just gets a little bit sideways, loses the thing. Yeah, this is the second time this car, just like you said, gets out from underneath them right there. It's just he's trying to run so high, and the car just doesn't have the grip. Ryan Vickers coming by. That was the contact on the hood. And there's the fire that erupts. You're talking about the oil cooler. The fire that erupts in the front of the car underneath where the driver is sitting. And as long as that engine's spinning over, this is pumping oil out on the headers. And it just makes an intense fire, as you see here. Finally just told him to stop the car. Maybe the fire will go out and he can just jump out of it. And, Andy, you need the spotter to help you because you have no vision. You can't see out of the front of that car. And it's a good job, the spotter, to get out of the car, get out of the car, stop it. Just stop it there. I mean... I've yeah, never the driver can't see that flame. He comes again, making another run at him. Three laps to go. Can he hold the bottom of the racetrack? Got to believe those two tires are going to take effect on the 17. Here comes Johnson. Like their dirt track at 190 miles an hour. Can Johnson hang there? Back in the throttle for 48, Jimmy Johnson. He's just going to take it right here. He just squeezes Matt Kenton. You can't quite get him clear. Unbelievable. These guys are side by side, lap after lap. Johnson, go. Johnson's got to be smart. He's got to be smart right here. Kenza trying to hang on. Johnson. Still there. White flag this time by. Still there. Barely. Oh. oh. Johnson clears him with two laps to go. Back in the spring, it was on the white flag that Matt Kenseth got passed. Here it's two laps to go. Does Kenseth have anything to try to reel him back in? Boy, it's going to be tough right now. Oh, look at Chad Canales. Is he loving that pass or what? By the way, Jeff Gordon in seventh position. Boy, it's the same. And right now, Jimmy Johnson's last lap, four tenths of a second faster than Matt Kenseth. He's got that clean air, and now he's out of here. You're never going to see it any better than that. I couldn't do not know if I could have done it with Rick and Robbie. Rick myself. Believe me, I couldn't do anything else. 
Jimmy Johnson came here nine points out of the lead. He came to a track where he had never won a cup race. But Jimmy Johnson has driven the wheels off his Chevy, and he will win at Texas Motor Speedway. Great job, Jimmy. Pit crew, you guys won this race. Pit crew, you guys did it. That fast pit stop, that's what did it. Jimmy, great, great driving there, buddy. Phenomenal job today, phenomenal. Well, thanks for giving me this opportunity. Woo! Ninth win of the year, 32nd of this incredible young driver's career. You can see what he's doing right here. He's changing that brake balance bar so he can do a big time burnout right here. He's going to take all the brakes off the rear so he can just light them up. That, he can just lock the fronts up and just spin the you know what's out of the rear tires. And boy, what a big points change, Jerry. The 24 car, Jeff Ford, back to second place, 30 points behind Jimmy Johnson now. A 39 point swing here in the points. Jimmy Johnson stops, and by the way, folks, from 7th to 12th, they have all been eliminated mathematically from the chase. Boy, when it's your year, it's your year. Well, let's talk to the winning crew chief, Chad Canals, who just told me he doesn't know what to say, but we'll ask you anyway. Another pit call to get your driver track position. Was track position key? Track position at this racetrack is always important, and we've actually in the past given up on adjustments to the race car just to try to get track position. And You know, it was sketchy right there with 30-some laps to go. Two tires worked pretty well, as you can see, with the 17, but I really felt the four tires are going to be better, but we had to have a good pit stop. And my guys busted off a great stop. I think it was like a 13-3 or 13-2-second pit stop and, and got us out there first car on four tires. And, man, I just can't say no about Jimmy, everybody at Hendrick Motorsports, Lowe's, thanks for everybody. And, man, it's just phenomenal. I can't believe it. And the way you get most points is by winning the race. They're going to go celebrate another win in the chase. And let's go here for Matt Kenson. Yep, Alan, another second place for Matt here at Texas. But what a race, Matt. Talk about trying to beat Jimmy there at the end. Well, gosh, I hate losing, but uh, I made it as rough on him as I could. You know, I usually wouldn't make it that rough, but I know he's raced for a championship. And, uh, gosh, I was just doing everything I could to, could, could to hold him off. So uh, it was a great job by all these USG Sheetrock guys. Got to thank them guys for coming on board this weekend. And uh, overall, it was a great day. It just... Uh, he getting beat, you know, I got that big lead, and, uh, you know, I can't believe all them guys got four tires. They just, uh, you know, they're really smart, and they got everything going their way. They get two, and they win. They get four, and we get two, and we still get beat. So, uh, just a good day for us. Can you describe saving that race car off for Matt when it got loose over here? Well, I'm glad I didn't wreck, but I'm really glad I didn't wreck Jimmy. You know, I was so sideways. But, um, you know, he had four tires, and, uh, you know, he had the grip we needed. I just didn't have a grip. I was just holding on for all I could, and I just get uh, as close as I could to him and, uh, you know, try to make it rough on him, but I, I just didn't have enough to hold him off. I, I knew it was a matter of time. He was kind of playing with me and watching me wear it down. How would you assess the day? Well, it was a great fight, but uh, we're just having to fight too hard for these uh, these types of finishes. You know, we need to be fighting that hard for, for wins, and just flat out got beat today. You know, uh, we just weren't very good right from the start. We weren't very good yesterday, and I thought, you know, we could, could adjust on it and get it right, but... Uh, there at the end, it's the best we were all, the, all, all day and night, and uh, we made the most of it, you know, and uh, disappointing day. Um, happy for Jimmy and those guys. I mean, they, they did an awesome job because uh, he wasn't that great early in the run either in, or in the day, and so got to congratulate them, and, uh, you know, we flat out just got beat. What's it like fighting a team as hot as Jimmy's right now for the championship with just two to go? Uh, you know, hey, you know, they're doing their job. I mean, I've never really focused on anybody else. I just focus on us and what we've got in our cars and setups and how we make it go as fast as we can, how we make our pit stops the best they can be. And, um, you know, those guys just outperforming us. That's, uh, that's all there is to it. You see the congratulatory discussion there going on between Chad Knauss and his driver, Jimmy Johnson. What an effort. Jimmy driving by Kenseth, and it drove cleanly, despite the fact they were both slipping and sliding those last few laps. Let the celebration begin. Let's get on to Jamie Little. Well, the California kid is going to don a cowboy hat for the first time. Jimmy, take us through those last laps with Matt Kenseth. How surprised were you he was racing you as hard as he was despite having two new tires? Um, I knew it was going to be battle to the end. And when it comes to winning these races, uh, everybody's going to fight hard. So 
I expected a good fight. I didn't think his two tires would last that long or he would be that good. So, uh, you know, I'm just, just glad I was able to get by. It wasn't much time left to get it done, but uh, the slows, I guess I should say Cobalt Monte Carlo was awesome today. Wasn't the best at the start of the race, but we kept working on it and then uh, went racing for it there at the end. Jimmy, was this race one year ago? You took over the points lead, never looked back, and became champion for the first time. Is this any indication of a repeat? I, I doubt it. I mean, it's so tough from year to year to have things repeat, but um, I do know that we're racing for the championship, and now we have control of it, I guess. So I'm, I'm just tickled to death. These guys have been working so hard in the 24 and 48 shop. So, I mean, I just can't thank those guys enough, including the engine shop, chassis shop, everybody at Hendrick Motorsports to give us, uh, give us this opportunity week in and week out.